Well, hey guys, hi. What is going on out there today, wherever you are, as you watch this latest episode of What's the Right Shot? And in today's episode, we've got Mark Peterson serving, his partner's Paul Wolf, Bill Matthews with the return of serve, and his partner is Len Wofford. And I'm going to play this through, and we're going to see kind of a crazy point here. And I'm going to slow it down right here. And there's so much to pick out from this point, which we will do in just a minute. But I want you, if this is you, if you're Mark Peterson right here, who, by the way, has a National 50 Singles title to his to his credit uh, a, few, a few years ago, but uh, still, you know, a top player every year in his age group. If you're Mark, uh, what shot are you going to play? And I'm telling you, this ball is going to bounce and sort of settle in just about waist high uh, to Mark's one-handed backhand right here. So take a second and think about what shot you'd play. And uh, as you're thinking about that, uh, got a little something for you, and then I'll be right back with the answer to this week's episode of What's the Right Shot? Okay, guys, we'll back with you, and I uh, hope you got your shot in mind that you would play. And, man, a lot going on here. Uh, good return to serve. I'd like to see Mark do a little better job here with uh, kind of a split step sooner so that he doesn't get so jammed up with this backhand volley, um, which, you know, sort of starts off the point. He gets a little fortunate here with an unintentional <laughs> kind of a drop volley. Bill, I think, does a great job picking it up and... Uh, and now Mark puts the ball up, and I think Len does a really good job right here of getting the ball down. And look at this. I mean, these two guys, who's going to take it? You know, Paul, I think actually, I think Mark makes that shot. And, you know, I was thinking earlier about stopping it right here and asking you what shot you would play if you were Len. Uh, and But the problem was is that I thought Len was going to hit the ball at sort of on balance right here. But this ball must have hit a spot on the court or something because Len uh, anticipates it getting through and it just dies. And he smartly plays this lob, right? So here's another situation. Well, who's going to take this? And I guess these guys must have communicated that it was short enough that, uh, that Mark was going to take it. And he just tries to sort of fight it off and get it back in play and does a great job. Uh, I'm a little surprised, though, at Len here. Let me take this back a hair. Um, that, uh, you know, if you're Len right here, you got to start gauging the depth of your lob because if it's going to be obviously deep, you want to move in. Or if it's going to be deep enough where, where, where Mark can't really get a good crack at the overhead, which I think... You know, I just don't think he can do much damage from this position. I would have loved to have seen uh, Len move in sooner. And uh, even if the ball's down low to his feet, the next shot, you know, well, he can still still handle it. Uh, that doesn't happen. And uh, here we go. And here we go. This is where I stopped it last time. Len does start moving in now because he realizes he's got Mark back. And I stopped it right here, <clears throat> excuse me, and asked you what shot you would play. So clearly, lots of opportunities here, uh, and sometimes that's a problem, right? You have show, you have so many choices that you don't commit until the last second, and the next thing you know is you don't really commit to that one last shot that you that you chose. But you know, I could see a ball up the line here. I really could. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the reason for that is um, is as long as you keep it down low. Uh, which would mean that I would not go for the big ripper because chances of the big ripper staying down are not great. But you could play a little, because you're on balance here, right? You could play a little approach up the line. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, the highest part of the net. But if you kept it down low, you know, you've Paul's got a real opportunity. And, and as long as you kind of move in behind it, uh, Lenny doesn't have a great, a great uh, uh, play on that. 
Um, you know, the other thing would be a drive, but I'm so concerned that Mark's so far back that a drive might not really get down. And uh, I think Bill's in great core position here for any kind of a lob that goes deep. And uh, yet, this is exactly what happens, is uh, Mark hits into the sun. And that's a real problem, right? Bill's kind of going, uh-oh, oh no, this is in the sun. And uh, Mark smartly starts to move in uh, to get better court position and challenge. And here's the problem. I, I like the shot choice by Bill, which is just, you know, I'm going to play the overhead back down over here to the feet, not not go for, you know, ESPN 11 p.m. highlights. But you know what? The ball gets too low. Ball gets too low. He's kind of jammed in here, a little bit cramped, and he just cranks this ball a little bit too flat. And the next thing you know is it goes deep. So uh, hang with me here because uh, coming up, I've got a little tip for you specifically on this play. But uh, I want to run this back in real time. And uh, we're going to watch the point a couple times in real time. And then I'm going to slow it down for you. So guys, helter skelter crazy point in this episode of what's the right shot. And what we saw is eventually a deep lob. Bill's got to go back and he chose to play an overhead. And there's a couple things I want you to consider if, if, if you find yourself in that situation. Number one is you've got to make sure that as you come back and, and you decide you're either going to play an overhead or you're going to play a lob or a ground stroke, whatever it is, if you choose to play the overhead, you've got to make sure that you've got enough room to be able to reach up and have good geometry. On the one that Bill hit, it just looked to me like the ball got a little bit low and he committed to hit the ball pretty hard. And once the ball gets down low, it's just, it's just a line drive. Hard to get any kind of shape on the ball spin to control it. If you do choose, and in this point, in this, where Bill chooses the overhead, he's got to know that both guys are coming in. There's been so much time for, the, for it to develop where the lob goes back, the guys are coming in. I'm thinking rather than go for the winner, I'm not saying he tried to go for the winner, but I want you thinking about if you're back here, you've got good geometry to be able to play a medium paced overhead and get it down to the opponent's feet so that Worst case, they pop up a ball to you. Maybe it goes to, you know, your partner. But you know, worst case is you're not going for the big outright winner. Hope this has helped today. Any questions, right below in the comments area. Let me know. And as always, man, you got to get out there somewhere and make today another spectacular day. So guys, if you struggle at all with the overhead, whether it's a deeper lob where you have to have some pretty good footwork to get back to be able to, really what you're trying to do is once that lob goes past the service line, your basic goal is to try to reclaim the good net position that you've got already up there at net. And part of the overhead technique is that it helps you reclaim. If you end up hitting a really good overhead and get a winner, great. But mindset wise, what you gotta be able to do is, is, is go back and be able to reclaim that net position. Number two, if the lob is short, if it's inside the service line, 
man, you know, here's an opportunity to really end the point. Not that they can't guess where you're going to hit it and anticipate it, even if you just crack one off, they get there. You know, you can't, you can't stop them from doing that. What I've got for you is a quick tip that I think can really improve the quality of your overhead, especially if you get a shorter one or it's a put away opportunity. Right below the video, there's a link that will take you to that free video. Click it and I'll see you over there.